This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. The Holy Spirit is going to in, endow you with power or ability to get the job done or anointing to get the job done. And it's going to be anointing from on high. This ability is coming from God. It's a God given empowerment to get the job done. Download and stay connected with the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind with these powerful and uplifting messages. With each message that you download and stream, you gain revelation of the fullness of God's grace. The Changing Your World podcast brings you life-changing wisdom right at your fingertips, no matter where you are. Subscribe today on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. This is your world. So let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know you love is here to stay. Oh, it's time we live a new life. Let us not shine bright in you. We sing by His grace, so we embrace your love today. We are changed. God will go to extraordinary it, 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 it links to try to get you to, to understand. And listen, when He wants you to do something, let, let, me, let me tell you something. He knows how to get your attention. This is the Holy Spirit I'm talking about. This is the one that I'm trying to convince you to let Him go ahead of you. Spending time with Him like this, walking with Him like this, you can't walk with Him without Him rubbing on you. Amen. The anointed are those who've been rubbed on. I call you that tonight, the anointed. Those who have been rubbed on, praise God. Hallelujah. 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 The anointing removes burdens and it destroys yokes in your life. And the more time you spend with your unseen partner, you're going to notice burdens removed and yokes destroyed. Burdens removed and yokes destroyed. You know what the anointing does? It produces sweatless victory, which means you're going to get victory without having to sweat for it. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. It produces sweatless victory. Some people have to sweat to try to get victory and still don't get it. But when the anointing comes on your life, what, what, what is difficult for others will be easy for you because that's what the anointing does. You know, you, somebody says the, the anointing breaks the yoke. It does. It removes the burden. It doesn't just break the yoke. When you break something, you might be able to put it back together again. But when it is destroyed, there can be no restoration. Mm. And the anointing is getting ready to destroy some of the yokes around. The Bible describes it as a, as a yoke around your neck, and it's weighing you down. And a burden on your shoulder, and it's weighing you down. But when the burden's been removed and the yoke's been destroyed, you're not able to walk like you're supposed to walk. If you're walking around with a burden and a yoke, you're not walking where you're supposed to walk and like you're supposed to walk. It ain't God's will for you to be walking around like that. But when it's been removed, you can stand up straight in the posture that God created you to, to stand. Oh, I prophesy to you, old world changes, that a mighty change, a mighty whirlwind is about to blow your way, praise God. It's about to blow in your house, praise God, with the doors being closed. It's about to blow in your car with the windows being up. There is a mighty wind of change that is about to come your way, and he will in very, very unique ways reveal himself to you, and you will know your unseen partner who you have decided to let him go ahead of you. Somebody say amen in this place. Amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now, let's begin this journey. Uh, in all you're getting, get clarity, get understanding, get clearness, get precision. And we need to get clarity, precision, and understanding 
about the purpose, I'm going to now refer to the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of grace. The purpose of the Spirit of grace. Go with me to the book of Luke chapter 24 and verse 49. The purpose of the Spirit of grace. Luke 24 and 49. Oh, praise God. The purpose of it. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh, can you sense we're going on a journey, Wednesday night crew? We're going on a Holy Ghost journey. Praise God. Oh, praise God. I just want to just worship the Lord. Just praise God. Hallelujah. But when you start, you, 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 imagine how much word I'm going to pour into you in this, and the more words you get, and, 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 but get this, get this, what we talked about here tonight, this prophetic word that came over you tonight was spoken to you, and I ain't taking it back. I said, I'm not taking it back. I can so sense him getting ready to move. And he, everything he said is coming to pass. Acceleration. I know the baby's about to be born. Acceleration of things. He told us what to look at. Look at earthquakes in different places. More earthquakes than ever before. Weather changes. I can see, I can see this thing coming quicker and quicker and quicker. And if you think for one moment God's coming back for a church that's, gonna, that's losing, you got to understand, with uh, the children of Israel when they came out, they were in slavery the whole time, and there was a wealth transference, and in one day he changed their entire situation. One day. I don't know how many days you are away from your situation changing but just keep following the one that you allow to go ahead. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And you're going to spend time with him because you want to, not because you think you have to. You're going to want to. Hallelujah. You're not gonna, some of y'all are not going to be awake. Well, I, I'll wait till I get in my closet. No, no, that's going to start while you're driving. Amen. You're going to be up here doing that, and people are going to be blowing their horn like, thank you, waving at them. Oh. No, 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 no. He puts that desire in you. Remember, he's working in you, right? Amen. He puts that desire. And, you're, and you, you're, you're talking about hearing stuff? You're going to hear some, some amazing things. I prophesy to you. I'm not taking this back. I'm not taking this back, praise God. The anointing is going to come from the congregation. Used to come from the pulpit, it's coming from the congregation. And I'm going to be on it right in the middle of that. Some extraordinary ministry gifts that are about to rise. People that didn't even think they had the gift for that, you watch. You're going to start opening your mouth and things are going to start happening. You're going to be like, wow. And don't tell me, I just don't know. No, I'll say, Lord, I believe I receive. Amen. I have wisdom, praise God. Every time you're tempted to say, I don't know, say, I have wisdom. And it'll come to you. I have wisdom to do everything you want me to do. All right, now watch this. Let's begin this. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. This is awesome. The promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power or ability to get results from on a high. Now, this is interesting because the word to the disciples were the promise of the Holy Spirit, I'm sending him to you. Watch what he says. The word tarry means to wait. 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 Notice, notice that, that place called there was the place of yielding. Wait. Wait here in the city of Jerusalem. When he say wait, wait, he says, I don't want you to proceed without the necessary equipping. The Holy Spirit is going to in, endow you with power or ability to get the job done or anointing to get the job done. And it's going to be anointing from on high. This ability is coming from God. It's a God-given empowerment to get the job done. 
So the Holy Spirit, his desire is to make sure that whatever the call of God is, that you be sensitive to understanding that if you will be successful, it will be because of his empowerment, not your ability, but his empowerment, his ability, his anointing on your life. And not only that, the Holy Spirit is the one who empowers us to live the Christian life. There's an empowerment to live the Christian life. Uh, you know, some people are thinking, well, we're thinking about empowerment. We're thinking about casting out devils. We're thinking about doing all that. All that stuff's cool. But don't neglect the empowerment to live the Christian life, to be overcomers in the Christian life, to deal with the circumstances and situations in the Christian life. He's the one who empowers us to live the Christian life. I so depend on that. I'm, I'm, I'm human, and you're human. I, I depend on the Holy Spirit to empower me to live the Christian life. I, I depend, and the more and more I believe that, the more and more I see him coming through. The more and more I see him, the less and less I see me. Now, me, human side, want to crop up, but the more and more I spend time with him, receive an empowerment, there becomes a restraint on me wanting to pop up. And eventually, in certain areas of your life, it don't pop up no more. We're going to always be dealing with something, but there are certain things you will see less and less of because he's empowering you to live the Christian life. Now, look at Acts chapter 1, verse 4 through 5. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. Verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, the word baptize comes from the Greek word, I believe it's bapto, which means to fully immerse or to cover. And when he talks about being baptized with the Holy Spirit, the picture here is until the Holy Spirit fully immerses and covers everything about you. So the day you got born again, you received the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, praise God. But the Holy Spirit on the inside of you wants to baptize you until every part has been influenced by the Holy Spirit. And you see, we'll see in the in, in book of Acts, we'll see how the baptism of the Holy Spirit began to cover, and they were baptized with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues. See, it's going it's gonna, to it's gonna even impact your, your speaking. Uh, somebody says, well, I'm baptized. What's the difference between the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit? It's that total immersing of the Holy Spirit until you're even talking different. You're speaking different. You're exposed to something that goes beyond your mental capacity. Uh, most powerful thing that ever happened in my life is when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I got saved first and started getting into the Word and kept bumping across this baptism of the Holy Spirit, baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I began to see how things change when people were baptized with the Holy Spirit and how my life greatly changed. I was empowered the day. I had to fight my mind. My mind was like, it was like, this is not, uh, I, there's no comprehension in this because it required faith. I, I could not comprehend the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I, I could not. And so I was, I was in the upper room literally for quite a while trying to comprehend this. And I couldn't, and they kept telling me I couldn't. And I'm like, well, you know, they would say, speak, and you're going to speak in your other language. And I'm thinking, I don't know, but one language is English. And I was a smart aleck. And then one guy, <laughs> then one guy laid hands on me, and he said, devil something. And I'm like, bro, who you calling the devil? I said, man, you don't know me. You know, just went, just stupid, you know. And then finally, after I just got tired, I did this one thing. Holy Spirit, go before me. I'll follow you close my eyes, begin to focus on him. And the next thing you know, I was, it, it sounded like a bunch of blabble. But when I started, I opened my eyes up on my mouth and the sound kept coming out. And I was like, oh. And when I stopped, I'm like, what 
what, what, what was that? And I did it again. And, and what was that? And I did it again. And I thought this, this is like being high. This is, I, what in the world? And I did it again. And they explained to me, say, you can do this. You can do this anytime you want to. I'm, I'm like, what? So I get home, I'd pray for hours. And I'd come out feeling like I was just, just, oh, just, ooh, glory. And then I noticed the language began to change and it began to kind of transform a little bit. And it went from just la, la, la's to some other things. And, and it's like, how do I tell somebody in the natural to understand this? And the Bible says the natural mind can't receive or understand the things of the Spirit. And so people have not been, re just really, there was no reception for it because, you know, I went to my Methodist church, I went to my Baptist church, and nobody ever said anything about that, but it's clearly in the Word. And in this journey, we're going to stop by that to find out what happens when you do that. And what happens when you do that, when you speak in tongues, the Bible says you're speaking wisdom. Ooh. In other words, you're saying something and giving, and you're, you're, the Bible talks about uh, the, your, your spirit is like a, a well of water and a man of understanding knows how to draw it out. It's, 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 it's a superpower that Christians don't understand. It's your superpower. It's the stuff you can use and pray about stuff you don't even know about, and it happens. Glory be to God. One lady gave a story of how she was praying in tongues in the kitchen. Just all of a sudden, she was led to pray in the Holy Ghost, and it just was fluent, praying in the Holy Spirit, never knowing that her little kid was getting off the bus, and he was just about to walk in front of a car. And the kid describes it like this. It felt like a wind blew me back. Man, I said, this God, this God. So when you, you start praying about things you don't know, what he means is you're praying about things you have no ability to know about in your mind, but the Spirit knows. Hallelujah. And he'll use it and, and lead you and guide you, but we got to, we got to, you know, you, have, you ever saw any, have you seen any movies and stuff by somebody, maybe, you know, Marvel comics or something, they had power, but they had to learn how to use it, and they had to learn how to discover it? That's what this journey is going to be. I'm going to be showing you your superpower, showing you how to use it, showing you that whatever the devil throws at you, you can, you can, you can pull forth your superpower and praise God what other people go through. You won't have to go through it like that. And even if you have to go through something, you're going through it differently than they're going through it because you're holy people, praise God. And holy people means that you're not common with the rest of the world, praise the Lord. That was a mouthful, but amen. amen. So that's where we're going there. Now, Let's look at Matthew chapter 13. So we can't, we can't live the Christian life without him, and we shouldn't try to. We can't live the Christian life without the Holy Spirit, and we shouldn't try to. And I think we've been trying a lot to live life without the Holy Spirit. Now, Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Not only did he tell the disciples to wait here in the city of Jerusalem until you be in doubt with power, you know Jesus did almost similar to the same thing. How come you don't read about Jesus doing miracles when he was three, when he was 10? How come you don't read about Jesus doing miracles when he was 15, when he was 12, when he was 21? He was still Jesus. Why did we not see or have any record of Jesus doing any miracles when he was 27, 28? Are you following what I'm saying? Now, look at this, uh, Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. So Jesus was baptized in water. And let me say this about baptism in water. You know, that's kind of gone away. Man, if you haven't been baptized in water, sign up to get baptized in water, man. It's just something that marks your mind. I, it's, it's, it's pretty significant to be baptized in water. I was baptized in a swimming pool in an apartment complex. I got so fired up about baptism in college, I moved out of the football dorm, and I stayed in a trailer. And, <laughs> and I would fill my bathtub up and had a line of people in my trailer waiting to get baptized. Now, the tub wasn't a real long tub, so I had to do, what a, I had to do a part one, part two baptism. <laughs> so I baptized the top part first. 
and then finished at the bottom. And, uh, and they were dripping, going out, and somebody next. I, I mean, can I tell you, we had, we had people waiting in line. They got baptized in my tub in my trailer. That's how on fire we were, man. Because, and each one of them, they would, man, they, some of them would come up speaking in tongues. They never spoke in tongues before. Baptism represents the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's a symbolic representation of the cutting away of the old and the walking away, not carrying that weight around, you know. And uh, somebody asked me, well, will you go to hell if you're not baptized? No. Well, why do you get baptized? Well, if it was good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for me. Amen. Amen. But it's something very, very significant. If you hadn't had the baptism in water, you, wanna, you want that to be a part of your Christian experience. And so when Jesus... Uh, when he was baptized, he went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. It was not a dove. You ever been to these funerals when they release these doves? They're, they're, they're birds. That's, that, that, somebody said, oh, they go to the Holy Ghost. No, that's, that's a bird. <laughs> that's a bird. So obviously when he saw the Spirit of God, it was like a dove and it lighting upon his head. And John saw it. The Spirit of God came on him. And the Spirit of God is on you and is going to come on you in a greater measure. Thank you, Jesus. It's something about knowing it. When you have knowledge of this, you start walking into it in a greater measure greater measure, you know it. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Do you know God says the same thing about us? You are his beloved and he is well pleased. God's not mad at you. He's not in a bad mood. He's not, you know, keeping in his memory all the stupid stuff we've done in the past. God loves you. You are his beloved, and he is well pleased with you. Say out loud, God is well pleased with me. God is well pleased with me. Somebody says, well, how could he be well pleased with me after I did that? He's well pleased with you because you trust in his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All that other stuff's going to line up and, and be what it needs to be. Look at Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1. Matthew 4 and verse 1. This is going to be a detailed teaching on the Holy Spirit. I want, to, I want you to know everything I can possibly teach you about him. I'm asking you to have a personal relationship with him. This journey that we're going to go on is my introduction to you about a person that you've not seen with your physical eyes, about your unseen partner, praise God. Matthew 4 verse 1 says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness, to be tempted of the devil. He, that's interesting to me. He was led up by the Spirit. Jesus led him in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. <laughs> if the Spirit of God led Jesus to a place of pressure, You know, temptation is pressure applied to the flesh. Mm. You've got to start seeing some of the stuff you're going through as preparation. Preparing you. It's the fact that because you have visited this place, that when something happens in the ministry, no problem. Been there before. Know about this. Know who this is.